and welcome to Lunchtime Politics First, the highlights. Two members get elected to head the 7th Assembly in Nasarawa State. Nigeria Labour Congress calls for investigation into few subsidy payments of past administrations. Welcome to the program. I'm Melissa Walker in Lagos. And we begin with a story that's just in, uh, that is the president, Bola Tinubu, has sworn in Senator George Akume as the new secretary to the government of the Federation at the council chamber. Senator George Akume, in the brief ceremony, uh, had in attendance, uh, which had in attendance some serving governors and also former governors. The new SGF took his oath of allegiance and office before the vice president, Kashim Shatima, the president of Senate, and Ahmed Lawan, Governor Abdul Razak Abdurrahman of Kwara State, head of the Civil Service of the Federation, and the spouse of the new SGF, uh, were also among the officials present. And ahead of the inauguration of the 10th National Assembly, slated on June the 13th, the House of Representatives is set to hold, or will soon, in just a couple of moments, we understand, a valedictory session to mark the end of legislative activities for the 9th Assembly. Our correspondent Terry Kumi reports that the final plenary for the Green Chamber is taking place. The Clerk of the House of Representatives, Dr. Yahya Danzaria, had explained in a statement that the session will feature uh, contributions, goodwill messages by members, former presiding officers of the House and former clerks to the National Assembly. The Speaker of the House uh, of Representatives, Fremik Majabia Miller, who has assumed the position of Chief of Staff to the President, uh, is also expected to deliver his valedictory speech. Uh, in the meantime, here's a, a snippet of what's going on at the time. As the Sadoki of Yaudi, a member of the Council of Yaudi Ancient Emirate, and a member of the Kingmakers Council of that great kingdom, Right Honorable Femi Bajabi Amila. May I also recognize the presence of our former presiding and principal officers of this great house, some of our former clerks that are here on ground, my respected colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I remain Honorable Alhassan Ado Dogua. Mr. Speaker, I am representing Dogua Tudungwada Federal Constituency of Kano State. Mr. Speaker, in the circumstances, I rise as the outgoing leader of the great Ninth House of Representatives. And based on your directives at this moment, Mr. Speaker, I rise on this epoch making session to move that this Honorable House do resolve to valedictory session for the purpose of this important engagement. Mr. Speaker, we have the presiding of former presiding officers on ground seated. We have former members of body of principal officers of this great chamber seated. Some members of the management staff, former and serving also seated to rejoice with us on this very important and auspicious day. Mr. Speaker, with pride on behalf of my members, I therefore move that this house resolves to valedictory session for the purpose of today's business. Right honorable members, I so respectfully move. Thank you, leader. Uh, minority leader, please. And we just heard from Ado Dogua, member, House of Representatives, majority leader, uh, representing Dogua Tudunwada Federal Constituency, moving uh, the motion for the valedictory session for the ninth House of Representatives. Let's go over to what happened yesterday, and this time, quite an unusual scenario in Nasarawa State, where the State Assembly started off on a rocky note. Two speakers emerged to lead the House of Assembly. Ibrahim Balarabe and Daniel Orgazi, both from the western zones of the state, are the two speakers. Both factions, who are members of the All Progressives Congress, held their inaugurations and elections separately. Our correspondent Halima Gea has more. Tuesday, June 6, was scheduled for the inauguration of the 7th Nasarawa House of Assembly, after which a speaker, deputy and other leaders are expected to be elected. However, as at 6 a.m., the acting clerk announced a postponement citing security concerns. Owing to this announcement, security personnel barricade the House of Assembly, forcing some members and their supporters to lay siege for hours. 
the Speaker of the Sixth Assembly is vying to return, and Daniel Ogazi, also from the Western Zone, is in the contest. Supporters of Mr. Ogazi, who is leading 12 members of the Assembly, block the entrance for hours. Mr. Ibrahim Balarabi and 10 other members conduct the inauguration at one of the state ministries. Mr. Balarabi and Mr. Jacob Kudu are elected and sworn in by the acting clerk of the Assembly, Mr. Ibrahim Musa, to lead the 7th Assembly. Uh, by the special grace of God, uh, we are going to work as a team. We are going to partner with the remaining two arms of government so that collectively we take the state, I mean the, the state to the next level of development. However, Mr. Ogazi and 12 other members gained access to the hallowed chambers of the complex. He emerged alongside Mr. Adamu Oyanki and sworn in by a staff of the assembly. My colleagues here elected me and my deputy here as the speaker and deputy speaker of Nazareth State Super Assembly. Governor Abdullah Isule later receives Ibrahim Balarebi, Jacob Kudu and other members of the faction at the government house. So while congratulating you, I would like to call on you as the new leadership of the house to find a way to work with everybody in peace. Because in Nasarawa State, we must work in peace in order for us to see the sustainability of the development that we started. So I pray that you work in peace with everybody because when a situation comes like that, there is no way you will find 100% satisfaction. As it stands, Nasarawa State now has two speakers, Ibrahim Balarabi and Daniel Ogazi, who are both members of the All Progressives Congress. Halima Gayam, Channels Television News. In the meantime, the Undo South Senator-elect, Mr. Jimo Ibrahim, he has been speaking of the choice of leaders for the 10th Assembly. Mr. Ibrahim explains that he has not been consulted by his party, the All Progressives Congress, on their choice candidate, but he's throwing his weight behind his own choice. He was a guest on our political program, Politics Today. My party said, this is their desire. Do they say by compulsion, you should go and vote for somebody? And what offense has he had committed that I cannot run for the presidency of Nigeria? If I'm a Yoruba man, I'm a Wiyari, is I do as well, you safe? So what are you talking about? Let's be strategic. It's about the party informing me, and I will ask them a question. Is it by compulsion? Does the party say nobody can contest for the post of presidency? You said Shani Musa is running. Ojikalu is running. Osita is running. So what crime has Yari committed that I cannot run? If you take religion, you, is that the only variable? There are more than 10, 6, 7 variables. So you have to find out whether the variable of religion passed statistical significant test of 0 0.5. No. And to the fuel subsidy issue, the president of the Nigeria Labour Congress, Mr. Joe Ajero, has been is calling for an investigation into the fuel subsidy payments of past administrations. Now, he was a guest on our uh, Sunrise Daily program earlier today, where he urged the new administration to use all available resources at its disposal to ensure that all those involved in alleged financial crimes under the guise of fuel subsidy are made to face the consequences of their actions. Before now, while this negotiation has been on, we have been asking, can you give us the list of those people you are paying subsidy to? Who are they? What are the companies? What are they doing? You know, or do you move even refined products from the creeks to maybe the headquarters and then you put amount of it in terms of subsidy as being produced from abroad and then you tell Nigerians that it's subsidy. Now what happens if during Jonathan, we are talking of you know, 335,000 uh, barrels, and then suddenly now we are talking of almost 70,000 you know, 70, uh, 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 barrels, you know, in that order. So what led to this sharp increase? So all that, that is surrendered by, you know, when I say corruption, and which needs to be investigated, it's not the worker that will investigate this. It's not the worker that is in control of uh, DSS, uh, police, EFCC, ICPC. So as a nation, you know, we have to come together, we have to come out. Let this government not, you know, wave aside the issue of 
subsidy, payment of subsidy or not payment of subsidy. It won't be investigated. If you're in a hurry and you say subsidy is gone, there is something that has been hidden. Can we find out what has happened and those that are receiving this subsidy money? Well, staying with the issue, the Edo State Government has empathised with citizens over the removal of fuel subsidy, which has led to an increase in the price of goods and services. The State Governor, Gordon Abasaki, in a statement said that the government shares the pains of the people and wants to assure everyone that they are standing with them in these very challenging times. It reads in part, as a proactive government, we have since taken the step to increase the minimum wage paid to workers in Edo State from the approved 30,000 naira to 40,000 naira, the highest in the country today. We want to assure you that we will continue to pay this amount while we hope to increase it even further if more allocation accrues to the state from the federal government in view of the expected savings occasioned by the removal of fuel subsidy. He further adds that civil and public servants would now work three days a week as against five days due to the rise in transportation. Other plans announced by the governor include for teachers and parents, they're commuting to school uh, for the awards to be reduced as the government is working on deepening the Edo Best at Home initiative to create more virtual classes and to lower the rising costs of energy on the people. Uh, he says the state will continue to work with the electricity companies uh, in the state to improve power supply to homes as well as businesses. Welcome back. A political group under the aegis of Ododo Consolidating Movement. They've called on the electorates on the need for peaceful conduct of the November 11 governorship election in Kogi State. The director general of the group, Sadiq Ibrahim, stated this at a press conference in Lukuja, the Kogi State capital, where he says the time has come for all ethnic groups to come together for the purpose of unity to move the state forward. The purpose of this, our gathering today, to one, is to educate the public on the need to peaceful and law abiding before, during, and after November elections. To mobilize the public to participate massively in the democratic process. To send a message to politicians to mobilize their supporters to participate in the election peacefully, to emphasize the need to be non-violent, to educate the public on the process of voting successfully, to sample people, uh, public opinion on their expectations from the government and the election body. We began planning of these elections, sensitization, and voters education program with the online campaign championed by the Ododo Consolidative Movement. Your voice, your votes. In all these measures above, we have, we believe that the public will impress in achieve maximum impact on our political sensitization and awareness. Now we take you back to one of our top stories about the valedictory session holding of the 9th Assembly in the nation's capital and also what we witnessed in Nassau State. Joining us to talk about this is Ms. Deji Dojo, who's a political analyst. It's good to have you on the program. My pleasure, Millicent. How are you? Fine, thank you. And I hope you're in a safe place because it looks like you're still on the road. Um, talk to us about, first, the Ninth Assembly. They're winding down, uh, joining Synodai. How would you describe them? And this is compared to, you know, previous houses Nigeria's heart had. Um, any marked difference? Well, on, the, on, the, on a general note, uh, the Ninth National Assembly has uh, consolidated and made uh, substantial progress compared to the previous uh, National Assembly. So you, um, I think the outgoing one at, one at the National Assembly uh, passed, uh, was able to get one round four uh, bills assented to, which is the highest since the return to democracy in 1999. So to that extent, you can say that uh, they've achieved uh, bigger and better results. 
than their predecessors. But that's the way it should be. Uh, democracy is a journey, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. So uh, we expect that each session will be able to do better than the preceding one. So um, and then when you look at uh, what the landmark legislations that were passed, uh, by the outgoing uh, Ninth National Assembly, you saw a uh, marked difference in terms of the passage of uh, the Petroleum Industry Act, the uh, Electoral Act 2022, the two constitutional alterations, the Proceed of Crime Act, the uh, money, anti money laundering, anti terrorism act. And several other, uh, you know, uh, legislations, including the alteration of the police. You know, um, I just wanted to quickly jump in and ask this question. I mean, then this is, do you think, and this is, we're looking specifically at the House of Representatives here of the Ninth Assembly. Do you think their constituents are, are satisfied, um, you know, with their representation? Some Nigerians feel that um, the Ninth House of Representatives were not firm in some of the issues affecting Nigerians as they were one, you know, with the executive in a lot of ways. Yeah, I think we have lost Jida. Hopefully, we will try to get him before we wrap up the show. Um, but let's take you to another matter which has been generating lots of reactions. And this is about the fate of a Nigeria Air. Well, yesterday, the House of Representatives Committee on Aviation described the launch of Nigeria Air as shoddy and capable of tarnishing Nigeria's image. It's asking for the suspension of operations of Nigeria Air and calling for prosecution of all those involved in the the project. This was after the Senate Committee on Aviation also criticized the unveiling of Nigeria Air, saying the project is shrouded in secrecy. These are officials of the Ministry of Aviation and the Interim Management of Nigeria Air. They are before the Senate's Committee on Aviation to answer questions on the status of a nation's national carrier, Nigeria Air, which was unveiled during the twilight of the Buhari administration. But questions have been raised about the whereabouts of the aircraft and the status of the airline after some Nigerians traced the aircraft, noting that it returned to Ethiopian airline service. These senators have strong words for the representatives of the aviation ministry over the manner Nigeria Air was launched. The Nigeria Air project. The issue was shrouded in secrecy to the extent that it was fraudulently displayed as a new national carrier contrary to the extant court order and international rules that strictly guided airline operations. This indeed was an embarrassment to the committee. Why will you, for whatever reason, having an interim MD be in a hurry to unveil a national carrier on the last day of your administration? Why? But the interim managing director, Nigeria Air, says the airline was unveiled at the time it was to prove to Nigerians that the project is not a fluke. The aircraft that came in and left was a legitimate charter flight. You see, ever since 2018, all you'd ever seen about Nigeria Air aircraft were pictures, drawings, not the real aircraft. And we felt it was time to show what the real aircraft would look like. Was it reasonably necessary, you know, you have to take this to interview, to take taxpayers' money and charter an aircraft all the way from Ethiopia to come here and for unveiling, if the purpose is just to show Nigerians how the aircraft is going to... We have had the pictures on social media when it was unveiled in Fambro. He also clarifies what he says are misconceptions of the status of a national carrier. We, we haven't got a license yet to operate. If you had asked me the question, I could not you, I mean if the social media had asked me the question, I would have said, we haven't got to that stage yet. We are not at the point of operating the airline yet, at all. The representatives from the Aviation Ministry and Nigeria Air then proceed to the House of Representatives to meet with the Lower Chamber's Aviation Committee. The committee chairman says members do not support the launch of the airline because of a lack of supporting and necessary documents. We are not part of the launch 
and we do not support the launch, especially at a time issues are yet to be cleared. The committee hereby resolved to, one, direct the Federal Ministry of Aviation and its partners in the Nigerian Air Project to immediately suspend any operation regarding to Nigerian Air and every other action with respect to Nigerian Air. The committee further advises that the Federal Ministry of Aviation with his agency, the NCAA, should designate some Nigerian indigenous airlines as carriers to take advantage of bilateral air services agreements entered into by Nigeria, pending when a viable national carrier comes on board. Linda Akibi, Channels Television News. And we take you now to uh, proceedings at the Presidential Election Petition Court, a hearing of the petition by the People's Democratic Party and al Haji Atiku Abubakar against INEC and the All Progressives Congress and Senator Bola Tinubu. Addressing the court today, the petitioner's counsel, Chris Uche, tendered the certified true copies of INEC election results from 10 local government areas in Kogi State available to them. He also informed the court that he will tender other documents of the first respondent, that is INEC, as well as other official witnesses he has subpoenaed. Counsel to the first respondent registered his objection to the admissibility of the documents but promised to give reason uh, when addressing the court. The same response came from counsel to the second and third respondents. The court subsequently admitted the, uh, the documents. Counsel to the petitioner Petitioners also informed the court that despite paying 6,690,000 naira, the Independent National Electoral Commission is asking them to get the remaining documents needed from their state officers. Lawyer to the petitioners subsequently asked the court for permission to proceed with calling their first witness for the day, and that was Ndubisi Nwobu, chairman of the PDP and Ambra States, who gave his testimony where he claims he signed Form EC8A when he realized that without doing so, he will not be given a copy of the results sheet. Uh, counsel to INEC, Abubakar Mahmoud, objected to the calling of witnesses whose statements have not been presented uh, to the court, saying he needs time to go through, through them. The matter is ongoing and we'll bring you more updates as we get them. I'm just being told that our guest has since joined us. Jido Joe, welcome back. And just before we let you go, as uh, you're still on the road, um, constituents, they're, they're, they're satisfied. Well, the question is, are they satisfied with what the House of Representatives have done? And I also want to quickly get your thoughts on what is happening with the 7th Assembly in Nasarawa State. Two speakers, one house. Quite unfortunately, in Millicent, very unfortunate uh, developments in Nasarawa state. Um, and obviously the executive is in support of the uh, faction that has the lower number, uh, 11. The, uh, the Nasarawa State House of Reps, uh, House of Assembly has 24 members. Uh, 13 members met at the assembly complex and chose um, a speaker for themselves. Eleven members went to the ballroom of one of the ministries and had another session. Incidentally, the one that um, had eleven members was the one that the governor uh, as accepted or you know hosted after their session, and is now calling on them to close ranks and all of that. It's a very bad women uh, for the seventh uh, assembly in Nasrawa state. And uh, it's reminiscent of what happened in Edo state, where in the last dispensation, only 10 out of 26 uh, members or thereabouts were inaugurated. So now uh, the, pre the governor, uh, Governor Sule, had obviously chosen to recognize the a uh, faction of uh, the level member. And um, this way, this way, incidentally, the two speakers are from APC. The two speakers are from APC. And um, I really don't think this will be very healthy for a state like Nasarawa that needs all the, uh, all the support of the three arms of government to be able to impact and deliver on dividends of democracy. 
But uh, it's not peculiar. It's not something that is out of ordinary. It's not something that has not been seen before. We saw one also played out in Benway State uh, a day before, where you know um, it took uh, a long while before the before the uh, speaker emerged. All so right, in some states, we, we it's need a to... seamless exercise mm. in another. We, we need to wrap up. We'd like to thank you. Um, we're wrapping up the show now. But thanks very much and all the best as you head out. Um, and just before we go on the program, uh, back to our story just then, um, President Bola Tinubu has sworn in Senator George Akume as new secretary to the government of the Federation. This happened at the council chamber. So the uh, presidency of Bola Ahmed Tinubu is taking shape. Um, in that brief ceremony, there were dignitaries, uh, some serving for former governors uh, when he took his oath of allegiance in office, Vice President Kashim Shatima, President of Senate, Ahmed Lawan, Governor Abdurrahman Abdurrahzak of uh, Kwara State, Head of the Civil Service of the Federation was there, and also his wife. That's our program at lunch. You've been served. Thank you for watching. I'm Minister Walker.